Okay, hopefully while I was taking a little break there, you were able to read the vocabulary that went along with division. That was just a quick review to make sure we had those terms locked in because they are going to come up again. Well, I decided I better show representation of this 3 and 2 fifths again just so that we're on top of things. In 3 and 2 fifths, what we're saying is I have four disks. Now, four because of this two right here, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But I have four disks that I have divided into five pieces each. And again, if you watched the earlier video, you might remember me saying, if you're dividing them into groups, the groups have to be equal. If they're not equal, you have a fractional problem because the fractions are not going to work if the groups you're breaking up are not of equal amounts. Um, they have to be equal amounts. You, you can't have a fourth in, in one of these and a third in the other. We have to find equivalent numbers then to make them work. You cannot have them just sit there with different denominators. So you're going to notice I split my disks into fifths. This disk I used all of. So I, it's one whole disk or five fifths. This disk I used all of. One whole disk or five fifths. Again, five out of five pieces, so I used all of it. This disk is full, five fifths again. And finally, I have these two left over because I didn't have enough to fill one more disk, but I do still have to keep track of those two. I can't just throw them out and say, well, I don't need them now. I still need them. So what I have are three full disks of whatever you want to say they are that I've used, and one disk that is still divided into fifths, but I only use two of the pieces. Hence the three full pieces and two fifths. All right. Understanding that, what we're going to do now is I want to talk about the fact that what we're really saying is I have groups that are full. Sound familiar? It should, because when we were talking about division a minute ago, we said we were dividing into groups with, at the end, a remainder. Well, this is where the remainder comes in. And if you look at my mixed number here, that would be the quotient to a division problem using the 17 pieces we're about to discover. This will look familiar in a moment. It's saying that I divided by 5, so really this 5, I divided the disks into 5 pieces, so it's the number I divided by. Remember we said that fraction bar really is a division symbol. I divided all the pieces into 5. I was able to get 3 full groups with a remainder of two. Sound familiar? This is really an answer to a division problem. And as I told the kids earlier in the year, this is really the last year you're going to see the remainder as R and then a number. Because truthfully, the remainder really is a fraction of a whole. And in this case, the fraction is two-fifths. Now, here's where some logic plays in. If this was truly a division problem that gave me a quotient of 3, a divisor of 5, and a remainder of 2, all that's missing here was, if you remember back to our definitions, the dividend. And the dividend is going to show up when we go to change the mixed number into an improper fraction. Now we're going to use the same skills we used when we were doing our division in the fractions. To check a division problem, I multiplied the divisor times the quotient, and then I added in the remainder from the division problem. And in theory, I was supposed to get the, the um, I lost the word, sorry, the dividend back. And we can flip back quick in our notes and we can see that again. Here we go. Divisor, quotient, remainder. To check that division problem, I multiplied the quotient times the divisor, and then I added in the remainder, and that got me back to the dividend. Well, we're going to do that right now, but we're going to do that with our mixed number. So watch. We said the 5, and if you want to write this down, if you want to hit pause for a moment and write this mixed number down so you can see it, that's fine. Um, well, you can do that right now, actually. There's my pause. Okay. Um, we said first step was multiply 
the divisor times the quotient. Well, in our 3 and 2 fifths, you'll remember, we said, there's the number I divided all the pieces into, the 5. There was my quotient. If we flip back again, you'll see them. There's the 5, the divisor, and there's the quotient. To check, we multiplied those. We're going to do the same with the fraction. Now, watch this. This is kind of neat. It makes a circle. And I always have the kids do this. There's my arrow. I am multiplying 5 times 3. What is 5 times 3? 15. Wait a second. We saw 15 back on the division problem. There it was, right there. 5 times 3 is 15. The next step was we added the 2, the remainder in. Look at that. There's the 2, the remainder. 3. Now we added it, not multiplied. So I multiplied on the bottom. I'm going to add on the top. So, and we have to do it in this order. Start at the bottom. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 2 is 17. Wait a second, Mr. V. 17 was our dividend in that division problem. Right, because I'm using the division problem that actually fits this fraction. So I end up with a 17 on top. I multiply the 5. 5 groups of 3, 15 pieces. I add 2 more pieces that were left over. That gives me the 17. So is our answer, is our improper fraction 17? Well, that's not a fraction, Mr. V. That doesn't work. You're correct. This is supposed to be a fraction. To represent this so that 3 and 2 fifths and 17, whatever, is going to make the same value, show the same value, I have to keep a denominator. My denominator is not going to change. Because did I change the number of pieces I cut these disks into? No, they're still cut into fifths. So this fraction is, or this improper fraction is, 17 fifths. The denominator travels over with it. This is the result of multiplying the divisor times the quotient and adding in the remainder. Ah, this should look familiar. This is an improper fraction where the numerator is larger than the denominator. And again, we don't want that to stay that way. At the end of our problems, we would return it to a mixed number. But for now, that's what we have. Just to point out here real quick, let's see if we check this. 5 fifths, 10 fifths, 15 fifths, 15 plus 2 is 17 fifths. In other words, if you count all these disks, there should be, whoops, the wrong side, 17 of them coming from disks that were all cut into five pieces. Try a few of these on your own. See how it goes. I'll give you one just to start with for practice. See if you can find the answer to this one. Or rather, not the answer, but can you change it into an improper fraction? Try four and two-thirds. See what you come up with. I'll give you a second if you want to pause right now and then come back and we'll check the answer. Okay, did you get an answer? Here's what I had. Four and two-thirds. I multiplied three times four. Remember, we always start on the bottom. Start with our denominator. Three pieces per object. Four full objects. Three times four is twelve. Plus two remainders. Fourteen total pieces. All of the objects were broken into thirds. 14 thirds should have been your answer. Want to try another one? Let's try another one. For this next one, let's do a little larger one. Let's, let's see what we can do with this. Let's try 7 and 3 fifths and see what you can come up with. 7 and 3 fifths. And you may want to hit pause right here. Okay, let's see what you came up with. 7 and 3 fifths. I came up with 38 fifths. 5 times 7 is 35. 35 plus 3 is 38. And originally, all the objects or groups were broken into 5 pieces. 5 times 7, 35, plus 3 is 38 fifths. Okay? Very good. You can make these up on your own. This is something you can do 
over and over. In our next set, we're going to look at now how do I change the improper's back into mixed numbers. All right. So have a good evening there.